Hello everyone, today I'm going to be making a quick video on the pre-tribulation rapture. My first question to you is, what do you believe? How did you come to that belief? Were you taught the pre-tribulation rapture or did you come to that conclusion after studying scripture? We're going to do a real quick study today and we're going to see what our glorious Bible, the Word of God, says. All right, so if you open up to 1 Thessalonians, we're in chapter 4. Let's start in verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, this is a very specific wording here, isn't it? Meaning remain, that's usually to allude to what's left over, what's left. Left after what? I mean, it just wouldn't make sense if we were talking about, for example, in today's time. But let's move on. Unto the coming. Notice how it says the coming. This is not plural. It's singular. The coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, of course, we know they're not talking about actual people who are asleep here. They're talking about the dead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Again, this confirms this. We know this is a precursor. What's going to happen first before we are raptured? Well, here it tells you. I don't think there's any argument here, right? We all agree. But step two is, then we, which are alive and remain, again, confirming this, remain, uh, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. There can be no doubt that this is talking about the rapture, right? A couple of things a lot of people overlook, and I just wanted to point out, again, the coming of the Lord, singular, very interesting. Please consider this. Uh, it's not a secret ahead of time. There's no secret half coming of the Lord. It's talking very plainly about the coming. But we also can very easily establish that before we go up, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So as we get to this, I want to present to you two questions. All right, so two questions to consider right now in coming to the truth of the timing of the rapture. Who are the first resurrection people that we just read about? And when are they resurrected? That's pretty safe to say that if you can come to get these answers right out of Scripture, well, you can pretty well determine when the rapture actually happens, right? All right, now open up to Revelation chapter 20. We're going to start in verse 4. Look at this. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. What's the first resurrection? Right here. This is what 1 Thessalonians was talking about. Are you sure? Well, let me ask you this. Are there two first resurrections? No. So we answer question number one. Remember our questions. Who are the first resurrection people? Here it is, right here. How do you know? Because the Bible says, and, I, and I'm not trying to patronize you. This is what scripture says, because there's going to be people that, to, to break through the hardness of this doctrine that was burned and seared into people's brains for years and years and years. Um, break free of that, please. But right here, it even calls these people blessed to have part in this first resurrection. Here's the, the, the key here. The souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, well, that can't be the rapture. They went through the tribulation. Well, how do you know? Well, because they did not worship the beast. That means they walked in the same time as the beast and his image. Neither did they take uh, the mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So this tells you that they were, number one, not pre-tribulation raptured. Number two, actually went through the tribulation. As a further confirmation of this, if you come uh, go back five chapters to Revelation 15, look what it says here. 
And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having harps of God. Wow. That's a pretty big statement. You don't ever hear any verses like this if there was a pre-tribulation rapture about a group of people who were pre or who were raptured uh, pre-tribulation. But all you see, you know, as, as another confirmation, let me just do this quick. In Revelation chapter 6, if you go down to verse 9, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony of which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? White robes were given to every one of them, and it was told unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. These people are crying, please, God, avenge us. And God pretty much tells them, well, hold on, there's more. There's others that have to be killed and beheaded just like you were. This just doesn't make any sense. A lot of people say, well, you know, when, when Revelation first starts, the pre-tribulation rapture occurs with, come up hither. Come up hither. This is a big teaching of John MacArthur, who is a heretic and a Calvinist, by the way. This is a Calvinist teaching, by the way, this pre-tribulation rapture. But that's what they say. You, you, you never hear about the church from there on, do you? The church is never mentioned. Yeah, that's true. But you know what is mentioned? The saints. The saints are mentioned. How could one be classified as a saint if they apparently were, may have been considered living in heresy up until the first rapture, when then those who were left behind, according to Tim LaHaye, had to go through the tribulation? But then they're, they're revered. As you look, these are people who resisted all the temptation of the beast and his mark and his name. And there are many, many verses in Scripture. And they're crying out to God, and God hears them and responds to them. Then they're called blessed as they're given the privilege of reigning with Christ for a thousand years in what the Bible calls the first resurrection. But somehow there's been a people, group of people that were raptured and pre-trib to that. We never, we never hear about. Them. I don't know. Please consider. I, I know what the Bible says. I'm asking you to consider. So let's come back to our questions. Who are the first resurrection people? Well, those who were slaughtered in the tribulation, resisting the beast, his name and number. They are called blessed and will reign with Christ 1,000 years. There is no denying this. We know, according to 1 Thessalonians, that we do not precede those who are first resurrected. When are they resurrected? After the tribulation. Now that you know that, I want to propose something to you, at least to make you think about this. And I would call uh, this almost a form of delusion in these end times. There are a lot of Christians out there who have no problem condemning Catholics specifically for not following Scripture. And we see it all the time, and rightly so. The Catholics do need to be called out. Things like calling another man father. Things like confessing sins to another man rather than our one and only mediator, Jesus Christ. Things like practicing necromancy as they pray to dead people like Mary and all the other ding-dong saints that they pray to. We see this. And, and how do you come to those conclusions that that's wrong? Well, it's because it's in Scripture. So in one aspect, people who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, they rightly so can call out heretics like Catholics according to scripture. So what's different about this? You can clearly see that there is no pre-tribulation rapture, but yet they cling to it. Even when shown according to scripture, there is no pre-tribulation rapture. But you will see in this video the amount of thumbs downs. You will see the comments of absolute people losing their minds. Because I guess a person like me would dare infringe on their fantasy of escaping this world 
before seeing a ounce of tribulation, even though Jesus told you, again, more scripture, that you will have tribulation. So something to think about while you attempt, I don't know, I guess if you love the truth of God's word, you will surely know just by this one, these couple of verses that I show, I've shown you, that the pre-tribulation rapture is a heresy. And here's the reason why it's a heresy. Questions for you to consider. If you dismiss the truth of what Scripture tells you about the return of Christ, notice how it says the return of Christ, just like in Scripture, it means that you really don't revere the truth of Christ. It's one thing, again, to call out Catholics for their heresy, but when it comes to a pre-tribulation rapture which has zero Scripture on anything, even resembling a pre-tribulation rapture, uh, you have to question yourself as to why you believe that because it's just not true. Scripture told, tells us that there's one return of Christ, uh, not a 1.5, uh, meaning a secret rapture. So question number two, could the pre-trib uh, actually contribute to the mindset of the great falling away? You say, what do you mean, Drew? Well, let me show you. So we, uh, well, if you go over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, clearly he's talking about a rapture, our apostle, that ye soon be soon not shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word, by the letter from us, the day of the, look at how it says here, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Notice this is singular again. Let no man deceive you. Here's the warning, another warning that very few people um, adhere to. By any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Yes. What's the word used here? Well, the word used here is a Greek word, apostasia. There's going to be a falling away. An apostasy must happen first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What's going to happen when the man of sin comes? There's going to be all kinds of false miracles. We know this in Scripture. He's probably going to be spectacular. Healing diseases, healing problems, infrastructure, solving the problems of the world as we see it, curing cancer, arthritis, all kinds of spectacular things. And while the pre-tribulation uh, pre tribulation people uh, who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, uh, suddenly look at their Bibles and they say, well, where's Jesus? He didn't come. There's supposed to be a tree. And now all of a sudden this guy shows up and he's wonderful and he's caring and loving and he's proving his work through miracles. And they probably will look at their Bibles and chuck them in the garbage. This is hand in hand. This is telling you what's going to happen. There's going to be something spectacularly supernatural happen. And all these people who are waiting for a pre-tribulation rapture because they didn't read or care about the truth of Christ are going to be fooled. It's going to happen. So again, is this absolutely going to happen the way that I said it would? Maybe not. Speculation at this point. But no matter what you take away from this verse, two things must happen. The apostasy and the Antichrist have to show up. This shows you that even now, all these people are still here. I'm just arguing that because you have millions and millions who don't read their Bible, they believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, they're going to be let down and thus easily fooled at this time. Now, I'm going to give you some other verses as I wrap this video up to show you, uh, again, confirming that the rapture is post-tribulation, uh, post, well, what do you mean, Drew? Well, here, look at Matthew ver chapter 24. Jesus is talking now, and he says, immediately, when? After. Boy, you cannot get easier than this. After the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the son of uh, the sign of the son of man in heaven 
And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Now, again, really quick, a lot of people say that the elect here are the 144,000, the Jews. But I'm going to give you four verses, and I'm not going to spell them all out. Check these four verses, and you can find out who exactly the elect are. Romans 11, 7, 2 Timothy 2, 10, Titus 1, 1, 1 Peter 1, 1. We are the elect, not the Jews. But here it says, here's the gathering. Jesus is talking about, when is this happening? After the tribulation. More confirmation. Scripture confirms itself. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his, together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Would this verse make sense if there had already been a pre-tribulation rapture? And the answer is no. This is an announcement. This is for the elect. He's talking to his disciples here. And don't start with your dispensation garbage either. Another satanic uh doctrine put forward by the same guy no less as this guy now did you know that john nelson darby pretty well started all this garbage at about 1830 to 1835 and he was in cahoots with them all up until for 1800 years nobody practiced the pre-tribulation or nobody believed rather in the pre-tribulation rapture nor did they teach or preach or, you know, teach uh, dispensationalism. Uh, so that it's all together. These are all Calvinist doctrines. Love these so-called teachers who teach a pre-tribulation rapture, but they say they hate John Calvin. Uh, they teach and believe many of the same things that Calvin believed. They're all closet Calvinists. Same with the one saved, always saved crowd. It's all Calvinism. Third question, and we're getting ready to wrap up here. How many lunatic so-called teachers have falsely prophesied the pre-trib rapture? Just on YouTube. Now, we're just addressing this because we're on YouTube. And uh, it's a very popular forum in the end times here. Instantly reaching millions and tens of millions of people. Uh, false teachings are running rampant. Uh, but we also know things like the Jehovah's Witnesses who have falsely prophesied the rapture. We also know the Seventh-day Adventists, on and on and on. Uh, this is doing a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, how many believers who, you know, in many cases wanted to believe in Jesus Christ and come to Christ have listened to one of these lunatics prophesy the rapture on a such and such date and have quietly walked away from Jesus Christ because of these lunatic teachers and what they did. Or if they said, oh, I just had a dream and the rapture's happening on April 14th. And of course it comes and goes and it doesn't happen. Uh, how many people have quietly walked away, unsubscribed, went back to their life, abandoned Jesus because of what these teachers did? Something to think about uh, because you know, all the more it shows you that it's a false doctrine. It's not in scripture, but the lunatics are usually the ones that pick up false doctrines, giving a lot of false hope with the lies rather than just preaching good, sound scripture. So I'll leave you in 2 Timothy chapter 4. This is a verse for the ages. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap unto, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. This is a very pertinent a couple of verses. Uh, bring that to your attention so that you can recognize delusion, uh, come to the truth of Jesus Christ by you yourself reading his scripture. I hope this has helped. Uh, feel free to leave your comments. For those who love the truth of Jesus Christ, God bless you.